हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस नेक्स्ट सेशन ऑफ के वी बी वाई एस एक्स सीरीज सो टूडे वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डू टूडे विल बी कवरिंग काइनेमेटिक्स डायनेमिक्स ऑफ रोटेशनल मोशन ठीक है एंड आ लिटिल बिट ऑफ यूनिट्स एंड डायमेंशन ऑल्सो ठीक है सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट ऑलरेडी लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड ऑलरेडी बिकॉज आज मैं थोड़ी ज़्यादा चीज़ें कवर करने की प्लान कर रहा हूँ ये गाइज इस वीक का शेड्यूल है मैं सामने से हट जाता हूँ यू कैन वॉच दिस शेड्यूल राइट सो दीज आर द डेट्स ऑन विच दीज सब्जेक्ट्स एंड दीज टॉपिक्स विल बी कवर्ड राइट and this is the uh, like schedule for the sx stream all right okay and guys uh, once again i uh, i'm willing to tell you about this group you can become part of this group and uh, uh, you will find other aspirants here you will find teachers here jahan pe aapke doubts address ho sakte hain so a good thing to do uh, install this telegram app and become a part of this group if you are uh, not a part of this group already all right and make sure that you are making use of our je app all right download this app theek hai and uh, make use of this yahan pe aap apne doubts wagaira discuss kar sakte hain and uh, the study material that we provide that is also available on this app all right guys okay so let's get started already and now uh, the question that you can see on screen ye questions units and dimensions ka hai theek hai i'm pretty sure that students of 12th standard they are good enough in dimensions so i'll take two questions on dimensions uh, this is the first one let's see what this question says uh, stokes law you uh, you would have studied stokes law in your 11th standard Stokes law states that the viscous drag force F experienced by a sphere of radius a. So, guys, you just have to notice what uh, a represents. A represents a radius. So, we are basically interested in the dimensions of a. So, dimensions of a will be the dimensions of length. All right. So, moving with a uniform speed v. So, we will have dimensions of speed through a fluid with coefficient of viscosity eta is given by. So, this expression is given to you. You know. अगर तुमको स्टोक्स लॉ याद हो इफ यू आर इफ यू रिमेंबर दिस स्टोक्स लॉ यू कैन गेट रेड ऑफ द फर्स्ट थ्री लाइन्स ठीक है दिस इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड ठीक है सो फोर्स इज गिवन बाय सिक्स बाई ईटा आर वी सो वी कैन यूज दिस इक्वेशन टू फाइंड आउट द डायमेंशन ऑफ ईटा ठीक है दैट इज द कोफिशन ऑफ स्कॉसिटी आगे पढ़ते हैं इफ दिस फ्लूड इज फ्लोइंग थ्रू अ सिलेंड्रिकल पाइप ऑफ रेडियस आर सो आर रिप्रेजेंट्स अ रेडियस लेंथ एल एल रिप्रेजेंट्स अ लेंथ and a pressure difference of p so p is representing a pressure difference here so p will have the dimensions of pressure theek hai across two ends then the volume of water which flows through the pipe in time t so v represents a volume here t represents time here and this expression is given theek hai k is given to be a dimensionless constant and we are supposed to find out the value of a b c so if you ask me this is a very regular question of uh, dimensions what are we supposed to do in this question um, i am aware of the dimension of p force upon area hota hai so dimension of p uh, i think majority of you would be able to write down the dimensions of p dimensions of l that is l only theek hai dimensions of eta some of you may have difficulty with dimensions of eta so you can use this relationship to get the dimensions of eta and then r is dimensions of radius v is volume t is time so i think the question is an easy one uh, i'll show you how to do this question okay let's go uh, my first target would be to get the dimensions of eta all right for those of you who are not aware theek okay? uh, hai to be very honest even i don't remember the dimensions of eta but i know i can calculate it as and when required so 6 pi eta r v this is how i start ठीक है डायमेंशंस ऑफ फोर्स आई फर्स्ट राइट डायमेंशंस ऑफ फोर्स दैट विल बी एम एल टी माइनस टू दिस इज डायमेंशन ऑफ फोर्स और राइट एंड देन सिक्स पाई इज डायमेंशन लेस सो लेट्स लेट्स इग्नोर सिक्स पाई ईटा द डायमेंशन ऑफ ईटा इज समथिंग दैट वी वांट टू कैलकुलेट आर विल हैव द डायमेंशन ऑफ लेंथ एंड वी विल हैव द डायमेंशन ऑफ स्पीड सो आई शुड राइट एल टी माइनस वन हेयर ठीक है इसको थोड़ा रीअरेंज करके सॉल्व करो ठीक है इसको अगर उधर लेके जाए इतनी रंग बिरंगी राइटिंग नहीं करनी है या ओके सो दिस विल बी व्हाट इस एल को अगर मैं उधर लेके जाऊं यहां पे एल है एल स्क्वायर है तो एम देन एल माइनस वन इट विल बिकम and t minus 1 it is going to become so this is the dimension of eta so the first step was to figure out the dimensions of eta theek hai agar ye dimension tumhe already yaad hai to you are in a better position to solve this question theek hai you can save a lot of time theek hai and of course you can reduce off your chances of committing errors also kyunki jitne hum kam calculation karenge utna hi errors ke chance bhi reduce hote hain so keep this in mind i'll be using this to solve the next step of the problem to so, ml inverse t inverse this is the dimension of eta <coughs> next dekho jo question mein given tha 
ठीक है क्वेश्चन में जो ओके गिवन था ठीक है इट वॉज गिवन आई थिंक v बाय t वॉज रिटर्न एज k टाइम्स ऑफ आई हैव टू चेक इट गाइज आई हैव टू चेक इट आई थिंक इट वॉज p बाय समथिंग आई थिंक इट वॉज p बाय l एंड देन ईटा एंड लेट्स चेक इट गाइज ठीक है मतलब गलत इन्फॉर्मेशन के साथ सॉल्व करने का या इट वॉज p बाय l p बाय l ईटा एंड r ओके okay. मुझे पावर्स भी चेक करनी थी कि कौन सी पावर किसके ऊपर थी और राइट सो लेट्स कंटिन्यू नाउ ठीक है so the expression was v by t equal to k times and then p by l raised to power a theek hai then eta raised to power b and r raised to power c i believe this was written so let's start writing the dimension now v is volume theek hai to volume ki dimension ho gayi l cube aur t ki dimension niche t hai तो ये इधर टी इनवर्स आ गया लेफ्ट हैंड साइड में ये आ रहा है ठीक है लेट्स राइट द डायमेंशन ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड के इज डायमेंशन लेस सो लेट्स स्टॉप राइटिंग इट पी इज प्रेशर ठीक है तो प्रेशर होगा फोर्स अपॉन एरिया फोर्स होता है एम एल टी माइनस टू ठीक है मैं यहां पे लिख देता हूं फोर्स होता है एम एल टी माइनस टू इसको डिवाइड करेंगे एरिया से एरिया होता है एल स्क्वायर तो जब इसको डिवाइड करेंगे एल स्क्वायर से तो यहां पर एल माइनस बचेगा एल डिवाइडेड बाई एल स्क्वायर इज वन अपॉन एल तो ये लिख दिया मैंने ठीक है तो ये तो मैंने प्रेशर का लिखा था दिस वाज ओनली प्रेशर ठीक है अब नीचे एक एल और प्रेजेंट है ठीक है तो यहां पे एक एल और लिख देते हैं ठीक है थीके? और या फिर हम इसको सीधा टू लिख सकते हैं और इसको मिटा सकते हैं या ठीक है तो अब ये हो गया रेस्ट टू पावर ए ठीक है ईटा की डायमेंशन हमने लिख ली थी एम एल माइनस और टी माइनस वन टू पावर ईटा ठीक है और आर होगा सॉरी नॉट ईटा रेस्ट टू पावर बी ठीक है और R होगा लेंथ ठीक है तो ये हमने लिख लिया है अब यहां से देखो पावर्स कलेक्ट करना स्टार्ट करते हैं जैसे M इसमें आ रहा है M की पावर A हो गई M इसमें भी आ रहा है तो प्लस B कर देते हैं ठीक है M इसमें नहीं आ रहा है ठीक है नेक्स्ट लेट्स पे अटेंशन टू L या लेट्स पे अटेंशन टू L तो L की पावर यहां से है माइनस टू ए ठीक है यहां से है माइनस बी और राइट माइनस टू ए माइनस बी एंड देन प्लस सी ठीक है तो ये L की पावर हो गई एंड नेक्स्ट लेट्स राइट दी T सो T इज माइनस टू ए ठीक है यहां से माइनस टू ए आ जाएगा यहां से माइनस बी आ जाएगा और यहां से कुछ नहीं आएगा इफ वी नाउ कंपेयर ठीक है हमने लेफ्ट हैंड साइड की डायमेंशन ऑप्टेन कर ली है हमने राइट हैंड साइड की डायमेंशन ऑप्टेन कर ली है अब हमें कंपेयर करना चाहिए तो ये कंपेरिजन हमें क्या बता रहा है यहां लिखता हूं मैं ये कंपेरिजन हमें बता रहा है कि ए प्लस तो जीरो होना चाहिए ठीक है और uh, माइनस टू ए माइनस बी प्लस सी ये होना चाहिए थ्री के इक्वल ठीक है और माइनस टू ए माइनस टू ए माइनस बी ये होना चाहिए माइनस वन के इक्वल ठीक है ये होना चाहिए माइनस वन के इक्वल यू कैन सी ए प्लस बी जीरो माइनस टू ए माइनस बी प्लस सी इज थ्री एंड माइनस टू ए माइनस बी इज माइनस वन ठीक है तो वंस वी हैव डन ऑल दिस थिंग्स अब हमें ये इक्वेशन सॉल्व करना बाकी रह गई है ठीक है तो इन इक्वेशन को सॉल्व कर लेता हूं मैं करके बता देता हूं ठीक है जैसे a प्लस बी अगर जीरो है तो मैं यहां से लिख सकता हूं इस इक्वेशन को लिख सकता हूं माइनस ए देन माइनस ऑफ a प्लस बी इक्वल टू माइनस वन ये तो जीरो हो गया तो a की वैल्यू हो गई वन ठीक है a अगर वन हो गया तो b की वैल्यू जो होगी वो माइनस वन हो जानी चाहिए क्योंकि इन दोनों का सम जीरो है ठीक है तो ए हो गया वन बी हो गया माइनस अब यहां पर डाल देते हैं तो ये हो गया माइनस और ये हो गया प्लस तो माइनस टू और प्लस वन विल बिकम माइनस वन उसको इधर ले जाएंगे तो सी की वैल्यू फोर हो जानी चाहिए ठीक है तो यहां से सी की वैल्यू आ गई फोर सो वी आर लुकिंग एट वन माइनस वन एंड फोर ठीक है तो क्वेश्चन देखो सीधा साधा सा था क्वेश्चन में ऐसा कोई कॉम्प्लिकेशन नहीं था प्रोसीजर था उसको फॉलो करोगे यू विल गेट दी आंसर ठीक है लेट्स चेक वेदर वी हैव गॉट दी करेक्ट आंसर और नॉट सो ए इज वन बी इज माइनस वन एंड सी इज फोर और ठीक है सो दिस इज हाउ वी कैन अटेम्प दिस सच क्वेश्चन ठीक है आई हैव वन मोर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम डायमेंशन लेट्स अटेम्प्ट दिस वन आल्सो ठीक है इसमें क्या कह रहा है इसमें कह रहा है कि डायमेंशन ऑफ एरिया ए ठीक है ऑफ अ ब्लैक होल कैन बी अब ये ब्लैक होल वगैरह लिखे हुए हैं ये सब थोड़ी सी ना क्वेश्चन को फैंटास्टिक बनाने के लिए लिख दिया मतलब वी आर नॉट कंसर्न विद वॉट अ ब्लैक होल इज ठीक है द डायमेंशन ऑफ एन ऑफ द एरिया ए सो ए रिप्रेजेंट्स एरिया हेयर ठीक है जी रिप्रेजेंट्स द यूनिवर्सल ग्रेविटेशन कॉन्स्टेंट मास इज एम स्पीड ऑफ लाइट 
सो सी रिप्रेजेंट सम काइंड ऑफ स्पीड ठीक है स्पीड ऑफ लाइट है वो ठीक है और ये लिखा हुआ है ठीक है हमको रिलेट कर रहा है सो गाइज अगेन वी विल डू इट इन सिमिलर मैनर जैसा अभी कर रहे थे ठीक है आई एल स्टार्ट डूइंग ऑन दिस पेज ओनली ठीक है तो एरिया के डायमेंशन लिख देता हूं मैं ये तो होगा एल स्क्वायर मैंने लेफ्ट हैंड साइड के डायमेंशन लिख दिए हैं ठीक है अब मुझे जी के डायमेंशन चाहिए ठीक है देखो जी के डायमेंशन अगर रेडीली याद नहीं हो तो एटलीस्ट तुम्हें एक फॉर्मूला याद होना चाहिए ग्रेविटेशन का ठीक है दैट सेज एफ इक्वल टू जी एम वन एम टू अपॉन आर स्क्वायर यहां से तुम जी के डायमेंशन ऑप्टेन कर सकते हो मैं थोड़ा सा डायरेक्टली कर रहा हूं टाइम बचाने के लिए तो फोर्स हो जाएगा एम एल टी माइनस टू अभी मैं लिख नहीं रहा हूं ठीक है यहां से एल स्क्वायर जाके मल्टीप्लाई होगा ठीक है तो एल स्क्वायर जाके मल्टीप्लाई होने का मतलब ये हो गया एल क्यूब ठीक है और यहां से के जी इनवर्स से डिवाइड करना है के जी के स्क्वायर से डिवाइड करना है ठीक है तो एम तो ऑलरेडी है ही नीचे एम स्क्वायर अगर और आएगा तो एम स्क्वायर आने का मतलब यहां हो जाएगा माइनस वन टी जो फोर्स का था वही रहेगा यानी कि एम एल टी माइनस टू होता है तो ये हो गई जी की डायमेंशन ठीक है ये मैंने यहां से निकाली है इसको मैनेज करके निकाली है सो दिस इज डायमेंशन ऑफ जी नाउ वंस यू हैव डायमेंशन ऑफ जी यू कैन पुट दी पावर एज एल्फा जी रेस्ट पावर एल्फा इज रिटर्न हेयर देन मास एम रिप्रेजेंट मास यस सो मास विल राइट एज एम ओनली एम रेस्ट टू पावर बीटा एंड देन सी सी इज स्पीड सो एल टी माइनस वन एंड दिस एंटायर थिंग रेस्ट टू पावर गामा ठीक है सो लेफ्ट हैंड साइड इज ऑलरेडी सिंप्लीफाइड सो वी डी नॉट सिंप्लीफाइड एनी फर्दर लेफ्ट हैंड राइट हैंड साइड लेट्स पे अटेंशन टू दैट सो एम फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट ब्रैकेट वी आर गोइंग टू गेट माइनस एल्फा फ्रॉम द सेकेंड वी आर गोइंग टू गेट प्लस बीटा From third, there is no m in that. All right. So this is what we are going to get for m. Let's talk about l now. ठीक है? L के लिए the first thing would be three times of alpha. From first bracket, we are going to get three alpha. From second one, there is no l there, so we'll not have to write anything. From the third one, we have to write plus gamma. All right. And for t, from the first bracket, we are going to get minus two alpha. Uh, no t here. And from here, we are going to get minus gamma. So comparing the two sides now. Uh, I can say that minus alpha plus beta should be zero, which basically means alpha should be equal to beta. All right. So, pehle first of all, what you can do based on this, you can eliminate. Start eliminating the option if we can see. No, all the options are having same values of alpha and beta. Minus two, minus two, 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 three, three, and minus three, minus three. So, based on this, we cannot eliminate any of the options. All right. So, let's solve further. Mm, the next equation is what this one. Minus two alpha plus gamma. Okay. Is zero, so that means gamma is minus two times of alpha. Gamma is minus two times of alpha. Again, uh, you can try of eliminating options here by looking at this, or you can straight away solve it to get the definite answer. That's your call. Uh, some of you may believe कि शायद options eliminate होकर एक ही बचे, ठीक है? और कुछ को ऐसा लग सकता है कि solve कर लो यार, बार-बार elimination का try करते हैं. अगर नहीं होता है तो time waste होता है. हो जाता है तो अच्छी बात है. नहीं होता है तो हमने जो time लगाया था elimination के बारे में सोचने में. वो तो वेस्ट हो ही गया ठीक है सो इट्स योर कॉल ठीक है आई एम विलिंग टू सॉल्व राइट नाउ ठीक है इंस्टेड ऑफ ट्राइंग फॉर एलिमिनेशन आई एम विलिंग टू सॉल्व यहां से पता लग रहा है थ्री एल्फा प्लस गामा जो है वो टू के बराबर होना चाहिए सो थ्री एल्फा प्लस गामा होना चाहिए टू के इक्वल ठीक है गामा को मैं लिख सकता हूं माइनस टू एल्फा सो इफ आई पुट माइनस टू एल्फा हेयर ओनली एल्फा विल बी रिमेनिंग सो एल्फा इज टू इफ एल्फा इज टू देन बीटा शुड बी टू ठीक है सो दिस इज रॉन्ग ठीक है बस हो ही गया ये दोनों अल्फा की वैल्यू टू इसी में आ रही है ठीक है गामा की वैल्यू माइनस फोर आनी चाहिए इस क्वेश्चन के हिसाब से सब सही है सो बी शुड बी द करेक्ट ऑप्शन राइट सो दीज टू क्वेश्चंस वर सिमिलर इन नेचर ठीक है एंड दे वर बेस्ड ऑन द थ्योरी ऑफ डायमेंशन ठीक है आई होप यू एंजॉय दीज क्वेश्चन आई नाउ मूव टू सम क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम अदर टॉपिक्स राइट सो लेट सी वॉट वी हैव इन स्टोर फॉर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नाउ गाइज दिस इज क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम रोटेशनल काइनेमेटिक्स लेट सी वॉट द क्वेश्चन इज ठीक है क्वेश्चन कह रहा है The wheel of radius r. So radius is given. Rolls to the right without slipping, and has a velocity v naught. Uh, okay, of its center. The speed of the point o of the wheel at the instant represented. Okay. So this wheel is pure rolling. Karra. The wheel is under pure rolling. That has been given to us, and we have been found the speed of point a. You can see point a there. That is not on the periphery. Okay. The idea here is what. Okay. हम किसी भी rotating wheel का uh, rotating plus translating object का जो उसके किसी भी पॉइंट पे स्पीड लिखते हैं तो दो इफेक्ट्स को कंसिडर करके लिखते हैं जैसे फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एल ट्राई टू राइट द वैल्यू ऑफ ओमेगा ठीक है ओमेगा हम लिख सकते हैं द स्पीड ऑफ सेंटर डिवाइडेड बाय द रेडियस ऑफ व्हील ठीक है तो ये हो जाएगा थ्री मीटर पर सेकेंड डिवाइडेड बाय थ्री हंड्रेड मिलीमीटर 
थ्री हंड्रेड मिलीमीटर को पॉइंट थ्री मीटर भी लिखा जा सकता है सो दिस बिकम्स टेन रेडियन पर सेकेंड ठीक है सो ओमेगा की वैल्यू हमने वर्कआउट कर ली है अब ए के पास जो वेलोसिटी होगी ए के पास इस डायरेक्शन में जो वेलोसिटी होगी ये होगी ओमेगा टाइम्स रेडियस ऑफ ए ठीक है और उसके अलावा एक ट्रांसलेशनल वेलोसिटी होगी जो कि वी नॉट के बराबर ही होगी ठीक है मतलब रोटेशन का इंपैक्ट क्या होगा रोटेशन की वजह से ए को एक वेलोसिटी इधर मिलेगी मतलब ए को सेंटर से ज्वाइन करने वाली लाइन के परपेंडिकुलर एक वेलोसिटी मिलेगी दिस विल बी ओमेगा टाइम्स द रेडियस ऑफ ए एंड दी अदर वेलॉसिटी दैट वी शुड सुपर इम्पोज विद दिस वन ठीक है इज द वेलॉसिटी ऑफ द सेंटर ठीक है तो इन दोनों का वेक्टर सम चाहिए हमें गाइस कैन वी कैलकुलेट दिस एंगल ठीक है वेल इफ यू आस्क वी दिस एंगल इज गिवन टू बी थर्टी सो दिस शुड बी थर्टी सो दिस एंगल शुड बी सिक्सटी डिग्री ठीक है सो द बेसिक क्वेश्चन इज दिस वी हैव टू वेक्टर्स एक का मैग्नीट्यूड है ओमेगा आर है एक का मैग्नीट्यूड है वी और इन दोनों वेक्टर्स के बीच में एंगल है सिक्सटी डिग्री का हमें इन दोनों वैक्टर्स का रिजल्ट निकालना सो दैट इज द बेसिक क्वेश्चन इफ यू आस्क मी सो वी विल बी वॉट ओके लेट मी फर्स्ट ट्राई टू राइट द वैल्यू ऑफ ओमेगा आर ए ठीक है ओमेगा इज टेन रेडियन पर सेकेंड आर ए इज हाउ मच आर ए इज ओके इट हैज ओके ओ दिस इज गिवन इन द डायग्राम एक्चुअली ओ ए इज टू हंड्रेड मिलीमीटर सो पॉइंट टू मीटर पॉइंट टू मीटर इंटू टेन सो दैट इज टू मीटर पर सेकेंड और राइट एंड वी नॉट इज ऑलरेडी गिवन टू बी थ्री मीटर पर सेकेंड सो वी हैव टू वैक्टर्स नाउ एक का मैग्नीट्यूड है थ्री मीटर पर सेकेंड एक का मैग्नीट्यूड है टू मीटर पर सेकेंड इन दोनों के बीच में सिक्सटी डिग्री का एंगल ठीक है तो वी ए को हम कैसे लिखेंगे दो वैक्टर्स को हम एड कैसे करते हैं ठीक है वी राइट स्क्वायर ऑफ मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ फर्स्ट वन स्क्वायर ऑफ मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द सेकेंड वैक्टर प्लस टू टाइम्स द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ फर्स्ट मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ सेकेंड इन टू कॉस ऑफ एंगल बिटवीन दम सो कॉस सिक्सटी इज कॉस सिक्सटी इज हाफ एक्चुअली ठीक है बस इस कैलकुलेशन को पूरा कर देते हैं तो ये हाफ यहां से कैंसिल हो गया थर्टीन प्लस सिक्स रूट नाइनटीन ठीक है रूट नाइनटीन मीटर पर सेकेंड सो दिन गिवेन ठीक है देखो आई थिंक फोर पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स शुड बी द्लोजेस्ट वैल्यू यू कैन चेक दिस फॉर योर ओन फोर का स्क्वायर होता है सिक्सटीन हमें नाइनटीन का रूट लेना है सो समथिंग मोर देन फोर ठीक है फाइव के नॉट बी दी आंसर रूट इसका स्क्वायर हो जाएगा ट्वेंटी फाइव दिस इज सर्टनली नॉट रूट ट्वेंटी फाइव सो आउट ऑफ द गिवन वैल्यूज आई थिंक ए शुड बी द बेस्ट ऑप्शन ठीक है एंड ए इज इन डीड द बेस्ट ऑप्शन दैट इज द करेक्ट आंसर एज आई शो यू और राइट सो दिस इज हाउ वी हैव सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन आई वॉन्ट यू टू रिमेंबर दिस क्वेश्चन टू जैसे ये क्वेश्चन क्या बता रहा है हमें Uh, एक व्हील अगर ट्रांसलेट कर रहा है रोटेट भी कर रहा है तो उसके वेरियस पॉइंट्स की वेलोसिटी हम कैसे लिख सकते हैं दैट इज व्हाट यू कैन लर्न फ्रॉम दिस एग्जांपल ऑल राइट ओके लेट्स मूव टू द नेक्स्ट वन ओके नाउ दिस नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज प्रोबेबली पर्टेनिंग टू द मोमेंट ऑफ एनर्जी एज आई कैन सी सो लेट्स वॉट द क्वेश्चन इज द क्वेश्चन इज अ डिस्क ऑफ रेडियस आर बाई टू इज कट फ्रॉम अ यूनिफॉर्म डिस्क ऑफ रेडियस आर सो देर वॉज अ लार्जर डिस्क ठीक है डिस्क दे रखी थी डिस्क में से हमने एक छोटी डिस्क निकाल ली है ठीक है द मास ऑफ द डिस्क विदाउट गाइज ये लाइन ना बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट होती है क्वेश्चन के अंदर क्यों इंपॉर्टेंट होती है बिकॉज मैक्सिमम स्टूडेंट्स यहां पे गलती कर देते हैं द कुछ क्वेश्चंस में काटने के बाद का मास गिवन होता है वंस यू हैव मेड दी वंस यू हैव रिमूव द डिस्क देन द मास इज गिवन ऑफ द रिमेनिंग ऑब्जेक्ट एंड समटाइम्स लाइक इन दिस क्वेश्चन द मास ऑफ द एंटायर ऑब्जेक्ट इज गिवन बिफोर कटिंग सो दिस क्वेश्चन से मास ऑफ द डिस्क विथ कैविटी ओके ओके गाइज इसमें अगेन विथ कैविटी सो आफ्टर रिमूवल द मास इज एम सो बिफोर रिमूविंग द मास वुड हैव बीन मोर देन दैट ओके द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया ऑफ द डिस्क अबाउट एक्सिस एक्सेस डैश और राइट ओके नाउ दैट्स एन इंक्लाइंड एक्सेस फाइन ठीक है विच पासिस थ्रू द सेंटर ओ ऑफ द डिस्क और राइट इन द प्लेन ऑफ द सो गाइज द थिंग इज गिवन ऑब्जेक्ट का मास एम है और गिवन ऑब्जेक्ट का हमें मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया वर्कआउट करना है इस एक्सेस के अबाउट ठीक है और राइट डजेंट सीम टू बी अ स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल डेफिनेटली नॉट अ स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड क्वेश्चन अ गुड क्वेश्चन ठीक है लेट सी हाउ वी कैन एड्रेस दिस क्वेश्चन इस क्वेश्चन को एड्रेस करने के लिए फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई टेल यू कि कौन कौन से रिजल्ट तुम्हें याद होने चाहिए इस क्वेश्चन को एड्रेस करने के लिए सो रिलेटेड टू अ यूनिफॉर्म डिस्क वी हैव अ रिजल्ट कि ये जो एक्सेस है इस डिस्क का मास अगर m हो और इसका रेडियस अगर r हो तो इसके अबाउट जो मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया होना चाहिए ये होना ये होता है मतलब होना चाहिए नहीं ये है एम आर स्क्वायर बाई टू दिस इज द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया ऑफ द डिस्क अबाउट दिस गिवन एक्सेस और राइट ये तो चलो एक बात हो गई अगर हम कोई डायमेट्रिक
सो दैट इज एम आर स्क्वायर बाय फोर ठीक है एम इज द मास ऑफ द डिस्क एंड आर इज द रेडियस ऑफ द डिस्क ठीक है I'm pretty sure that you guys are aware of parallel axis theorem and perpendicular axis theorem, so I'll not tell them. Okay? Like when we are attempting questions on moment of inertia, it is quite expected that you guys should be aware of parallel axis theorem and par uh, perpendicular axis theorem. So I'm not stating the theorems here. We'll be using them, but I'm not stating them here. Okay? But these are the basic formula that will be employed in this question. Okay? Okay. Apart from that, my calculation here. I'll do it. Then I'll go on to the next page, which is a blank page, so that I can solve this question. ठीक है व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट इफ द मास ऑफ दिस रिमेनिंग ऑब्जेक्ट इज लेट से एम देन द मास दैट वी हैव रिमूव्ड फ्रॉम हेयर ओके आई एल राइट इट एज डेल्टा एम सो हाउ मच विल डेल्टा एम बी इन टर्म्स ऑफ कैपिटल एम सो लेट्स कैलकुलेट इट हेयर ओनली ठीक है उस वो कैलकुलेशन हम यहीं पर कर लेते हैं uh, कैसे करेंगे आई एम गोइंग टू इक्वेट मास पर यूनिट एरिया ठीक है मास ऑफ द रिमेनिंग ऑब्जेक्ट इज एम Area of the remaining object would be pi uh, r square minus pi r by two square. All right. So for the remaining object, mass per unit area is this much. For the object that we have taken out, mass per unit area would be mass divided by the area, which is pi r by two square. Just check this, guys. ठीक है जो शेडेड एरिया है ये होगा कंप्लीट डिस्क का एरिया माइनस दिस एरिया सो दैट इज व्हाट आई हैव रिटन हेयर एम डिवाइडेड बाय दिस एरिया इज द मास पर यूनिट एरिया ऑफ द रिमेनिंग ऑब्जेक्ट एंड डेल्टा एम डिवाइडेड बाय द एरिया ऑफ दिस ठीक है इक्वल होना चाहिए सो यहां से ये कितना हो गया ये हो गया पाई आर स्क्वायर माइनस वन बाय फोर सो दिस बेसिकली बिकम्स एम डिवाइडेड बाय थ्री बाय फोर टाइम्स ऑफ पाई आर स्क्वायर और राइट दिस बिकम्स हाउ मच This becomes delta m divided by pi r square by four again. So we can cut this pi r square and four. All right. So we now know that delta m is actually m by three. Check this. ठीक है जो मास हमने remove किया है that is actually uh, m by three times. ठीक है यहाँ तक आ रहा है क्या समझ में? Clear है guys. So let's solve the question now. ठीक है वंस वी फिगर आउट दिस मास नाउ व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू डू लेट्स क्रिएट सम स्पेस नाउ और शुड आई डू इट हेयर ओनली बिकॉज द फिगर इज हेयर सो लेट मी ड्रॉ लेट मी डू इट हेयर ओनली ठीक है द स्पेस इज लेस बट द फिगर इज देयर आई विल मेक अ फिगर फ्रॉम माय हैंड व्हिच विल बी अ रफ फिगर सो लेट्स से द डिस्क इज स्टिल देयर ऑल राइट सो डेल्टा एम मास इज प्रेजेंट देयर इन दिस केस द टोटल मास वुड बी कैपिटल एम प्लस डेल्टा एम एंड मोमेंट ऑफ एनर्जी अबाउट दिस एक्स एक्स प्राइम वुड बी In this scenario, what we can write? Uh, all right, uh, let me write it straight away. Okay, uh, to save space, I'm doing this. Capital M plus delta M. All right, guys, I could have written M by three here. Uh, just for the purpose of explaining it to you, I'm writing it delta M right now. I'll replace it in the next step. Uh, R square by four. Check this now. Okay, what I've done here, I've written the moment of inertia of the entire disk. About this diametric axis, okay. Uh, check it. Be convinced whether this is correct or not. All right. Total mass uh, about the diametric axis. This is the moment of inertia. Now, if I subtract the moment of inertia of this part, okay, uh, okay. First, I'll uh, about this axis. I have to write moment of inertia of this part about this axis. And how am I going to write that? I'm going to write the moment of inertia of this disk about this diametric axis. Then I'm going to use parallel axis theorem. So what I'm subtracting, uh, pay attention to that. I'm going to write what mm, delta m r by two whole square, okay, mass into radius square divided by four. That gives you moment of inertia about the diametric axis. Now we'll have to use parallel axis theorem. For that, I'll be needing this distance. ठीक है, this distance is r by two. This angle is 45 degree, so this distance will be r by two into cos 45. So r by two root two. All right. So I should be writing plus delta m into r by two root two square. Check this. All right. This should give us the answer. ठीक है, this should give us the answer. Now let me finish the calculation. ठीक है. I'm do, I'll be doing it very carefully. Any error will lead to a wrong answer. So this number is four m by three m plus m by three. 
सो दिस इज फोर एम बाई थ्री डिवाइडेड बाय एम ओके सो बाय थ्री विल बी लेफ्ट और राइट सो इफ आई टेक आउट एम आर स्क्वायर एज कॉमन बिकॉज आई कैन सी दैट एम आर स्क्वायर विल बी प्रेजेंट एवरीवेयर सो दिस टर्म बिकम्स फोर एम बाय थ्री बाय फोर सो बाय थ्री इज लेफ्ट सो वन बाय थ्री फ्रॉम दिस टर्म ओके नाउ फ्रॉम दिस टर्म वॉट आर वी गोइंग टू गेट फ्रॉम हेयर uh it will be r square by 4 a 4 uh, another 4 is present there so 16 will be in the denominator and this delta m will be m by 3 so 16 into 3 will be 48 okay so i'm expecting 1 by 48 here okay 1 by 48 mr square will be taken out okay what can we expect from this third term again uh square of this will be 8 square of this will be 8 and 3 will be here okay so we can expect by 24 All right, so let's finish the calculation now. It will be M R square. Then uh, I can take 48 as the LCM. If 48 as the 8 uh, is the LCM, we are going to get a 16 here. 16 minus 1 minus 2. 16 minus 1 minus 2. So that's 13 by 48. Do we have an option like that? 13 by 48 M R square. C option should be the correct one. All right. uh let's check the answer c answer is the correct one all right guys so i hope you like this question it was a good question actually a uh, lot of uh, steps were involved in which error could be committed like uh, finding out delta time that was a critical step then writing the moment of inertia carefully all right uh, especially while using the parallaxis theorem you have to be very careful that you first write the moment of inertia of the part removed about its own diameter and then you use parallaxis theorem All right. Okay, guys. Uh, let's move to another question now. Let's move to another question now. This question says what? Let's see. A uh, weightless rigid rod AB of length L. All right. So this AB is the rod of length L, and it is given to be weightless and rigid also. Okay. Carries two equal masses M and M, secured at N and other at the midpoint, as shown in the figure. The rod can rotate in the vertical plane about the hinge at O. Minimum horizontal velocity required to be imparted to the end B. All right. So guys uh, the question is like this masses are present at b and c and we have to impart some velocity to v so that the uh, rod is able to finish the circle uh, don't seem like uh, a very complicated question here why see uh, a rigid rod is given so if i think about the starting situation we will impart some velocity let's say v not to b so i can say that half of that velocity will come to c also all right why because this is situated at the midpoint of the hinge and end b so this is hinge this is hinge uh, now once this rod comes in the vertical position like this if this rod acquires a vertical position and b and c are almost at rest also then also we will say we can say that the motion the circular motion will be completed like we have to make sure that we are imparting sufficient kinetic energy in this figure so that when it becomes put like it becomes zero only when the rod has become horizontal uh, vertical in the upward direction so Mm, if i if you ask me the kinetic energy that we have given is half m v not square that's the kinetic energy that c is going to acquire uh, actually v not by 2 it should be i have i spoken uh, v not by 2 but probably i forgot to write it okay so that's the kinetic energy of c kinetic energy of b will be half m v not square this will be the kinetic energy of b okay now this should be equal to the increase in potential energy so the height of b has changed by l and the height of c has changed by no the height of b has changed by 2l l this and l this so height of b has changed by 2l height of c has changed by l so i should be writing m into g into 2l this is the increase in potential energy of end b of particle at b and then i should be writing as m g into l this is the increase in gravitational potential energy of the particle at c All right. Okay. So let's solve this. So this becomes what? This is one by four. This is one. So if I solve it here, okay, one by four plus one is five by four. I will just let me check. Yeah, it's five by four times the kinetic energy. Uh, that is half m v not square, and this should be same as three m g l. So m gets cancelled. So v not should be how much? Uh, well, it should be eight into three. Twenty four by five. Root of twenty four by five gl. So C option seems to be the correct one. All right, guys. Uh, let's check the answer. It was a simple question based on the work energy theorem. Uh, C option is indeed the correct one. All right, guys. Okay. So I hope uh, you have understood this question. 
let's move on to the next one let's move on to the next one all right guys uh, before i move to the next uh, question actually uh, i have a situation here that i want to present before you through this situation i want to tell you about certain concepts that will enable you to attack an entire category of problems all right so my aim here is not to give you one example or two example but my aim here is to give you the concept that can enable you to attack an entire uh, category so you uh, you know not one two example but a uh, collection of problems is what i'm targeting right now all right so let, let's try to understand this situation uh, since the time is uh, less i'll try to be a little bit quicker all right i hope you get this so what is the challenge right now what is the challenge that you can see so there is a inclined plane i hope it's pretty clear from the figure and on the inclined plane we are releasing three objects the figure shows three object we'll talk about four objects uh, one can be considered as a disc it's an annular disc actually uh, uh, annular ring actually this, this is a ring a disc a sphere so we are releasing them together and we are wondering that which one will reach bottom first which one will reach the bottom with highest speed highest angular speed maximum kinetic energy and uh, blah 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 like we can talk about a lot of other things all right so guys how to deal with these questions let's try to figure that out i'm trying to address these questions right now so first of all in these questions it is very important to keep in mind whether the given surface has zero friction or whether the given surface has high friction what, what do i mean by high friction you can say by high friction i mean that the friction is sufficiently high that we can uh, ignore the possibility of slipping okay so i'll talk about a third case also when friction fails to prevent the slipping okay but for understanding the third case uh, we have to first look at these two cases if we are pretty good with these two cases then the third case will become easy to understand so we have released the object and we have been asked which object is going to reach the bottom first and which object is going to have a higher linear speed which object is going to have a higher angular speed okay so to address this question the first thing that should come to your mind is whether the given inclined plane is a frictionless one or whether it is a very rough inclined plane because the answers will be different in the two cases so ask yourself these two questions first let's say the given surface is absolutely frictionless okay in that case think about how many forces will be acting on the sphere or whatever body it is okay only a normal force since friction is not there the surface will be exerting only the normal force and the gravity mg all right so the, these are the two dark blue arrows that you can see here normal and mg so these will be the two forces okay so we can break this mg into two components mg cos theta and mg sin theta so mg cos theta will be balanced by n Oh, and keep in mind guys there is no other force okay the only contact force acting on this body whatever it is whether a disc whether a sphere whether a ring whatever it is the only contact force acting on the body would be uh, normal force the only non contact force acting on the body would be gravitational force so these are the only two forces acting on the body and more importantly uh, can you see that both the forces will act through the center through the center of the body okay there is no other option uh we are assuming uniform bodies right we are assuming we are not talking about non uniform bodies so in uniform bodies the center of mass will lie at the geometrical center so mg will act through the center normal will act through the center because uh, any normal drawn on a round object they definitely passes through the center so that means torque about center of mass will be zero and if torque about center of mass will be zero that it means that the object will not translate will, will not rotate at all okay it will not rotate uh, so what do i mean to say i mean to say that if uh, there was a plus sign made on this object and if it was released so as the object moves down okay the plus sign will remain as it is the object is only translating it is not rotating at all and the translation will be taking place because of this force so this translation will take place with this much acceleration so if the surface is absolutely frictionless okay then all the objects will only translate they will not rotate and they will translate with the same acceleration g sin theta which means all are going to reach bottom together all right let's see what is written there so angular object angular acceleration of the object will be zero linear acceleration will be equal to g sin theta which is common for all so all the objects are going to reach bottom together they are all going to have the same velocity or the same speed when they reach bottom so if they also have the same mass then they are uh, going to have same kinetic energy which will only be translational in nature no rotational energy 
okay and this is the case when the inclined plane when the given inclined plane is absolutely smooth okay so this is one case uh let's talk about the second case motion on a very rough inclined plane okay so when i say very rough it means that uh, slipping is out of question now so if we are talking about how many forces are acting on the body now we have to talk about three forces normal and mg they were there earlier also now a friction will also be there all right so let's say friction acts in the upward direction so uh since friction is also there we have uh we have to make sure that uh, like the torque will become non zero now n is not producing any torque mg is not producing any torque about the center of mass but friction will start producing a torque and this torque will be clockwise in this figure okay uh just a minute guys so this figure uh, clockwise will be there so there will be some angular acceleration also all right so the equations that we now write okay i have again resolved mg into two components the equation that we now, now write is f into r is i alpha all right this i is about the center of mass okay mg sin theta minus f is m alpha i hope you understand this the net downward force is mg sin theta so mg sin theta minus f is this and since slipping is not taking place so alpha can be written as uh, uh, a can be written as alpha r so these are the three equations the three unknowns that we have they are a alpha and f solving these three equations we get a as g sin theta upon 1 plus i by mr square okay 1 plus so this is the value of acceleration that we are getting and the value of friction that we are getting would be mg sin theta upon 1 plus mr square by i okay so this is the value of friction that we are getting so these are the results we are going to interpret these results now okay uh, guys if you want you can note these figures uh, note these things down on a piece of paper because when i move to the next slide these will be unavailable these will not be visible to you so whatever i am explaining on the next slide you may not be able to understand that unless you have these things readily available with you all right so you can just write them down on a piece of paper okay so these are the expression for acceleration and friction so now let's try to understand something uh we have obtained some value of friction okay and it tells us that that much friction should be acting on the body now whether it can actually act on the body depends on how much friction is available the available value of friction is basically the limiting value like friction can go up to the limiting value but not beyond that so the available value is limiting we call it limiting value this is the value of friction that should be acting on the round object so this value should be less than mu n uh because the available value the required value this f is the required value this should be acting on the body this is the available value so the required value should be less than the available value only then we can say that slipping is not taking place so this should be less than this which means uh n can be written as mg cos theta so this means that mu should be more than this value this mu should be more than this value now if i take four objects okay uniform ring uniform disk uniform hollow sphere uniform solid sphere the moment of inertia about diameter they are mentioned here uh, i hope like uh, you are expected to be aware of these expressions okay if not then guys please revise rotation you are expected to be aware of these so if i start putting these numbers here for example uh, in the expression for acceleration if i start substituting the value of i i'll move back to show you the expression for acceleration this was it okay so if i start putting the value of acceleration here the values that we are going to get would be g sin theta by 2 2 g sin theta by 3 3 g sin theta by 5 and 5 g sin theta by 7 all right and similarly by putting the value the, these values here okay the value of mu that you are going to get are these okay so what what is uh, all these things tell us first thing note that the acceleration is now different unlike the previous case which previous case unlike the case of frictionless surface unlike the case of frictionless surface when the accelerations were constant this time the accelerations are different and you can see that outer like all are having different value i hope you can arrange them in the increasing order so when you arrange them in increasing order whichever object will have largest acceleration will reach the bottom at uh, quickest in the in the least time all right so out of these values which is largest i think 5g sin theta by 7 this is the largest one this is more than 0.7 this is 0.6 this is 0.66 <coughs> this is 0.5 so this is more than 0.7 so this is the having the largest acceleration so this will be the first one to reach the bottom all right and uh, the rest of the order i think you can take care of that apart from this this value tells us that the minimum friction coefficient required by the objects all right for for them to enable pure rolling on the inclined surface so uniform solid sphere demands the least friction 
okay this is again this is less than 0.3 okay 2 divided by 7 that's less than 0.3 so the uh, uniform solid sphere is the least demanding in terms of friction it says i'll i'll manage with the minimum of friction just make sure that mu is more than uh, 2 by 7 which is approximately 0.3 all right a uh, uniform hollow sphere demands a value of 0.4 into 10 theta this demands a value of 0.33 and this demands a value of 0.5 so our ring is the most demanding one our ring demands maximum value of friction okay which is 0.5 tan theta then uh, disk uh, sorry uh, uniform disk yeah then disk is the next one then hollow sphere and sorry the least demanding one is this uh then next higher is this then next higher is this and then most higher is this all right so uh i hope you have these values in mind now okay you can note these values down because i'm going to pose a challenge in front of you guys okay the next slide contains a challenge in front of you so let's say if you can win that challenge or not okay so uh i'll just mention the order again uh fastest one would be the uniform solid sphere next one to reach bottom would be disk next one to reach bottom would be uh hollow sphere the last one would be ring all right and uh, in terms of demand of friction the same order goes uh solid sphere demands least friction uh disk demands the next higher value hollow sphere demands the next higher value and uniform rings demands the most friction out of these four we are talking about okay so now guys there is a challenge in front of you you can read this challenge and you can try to address this one uh i'll wait for some time uh, and uh, if you are watching a replay of this session you can post your answers in the comments box the answers will follow here also but i want you guys to write the answer on a piece of paper that basically means that you have committed something and you can then check whether you are right or wrong all right so the question says that a race is to be organized in which four participants will be there each participant will have to choose one okay each participant will have to choose i'll come slightly in the frame yeah okay that will make the uh, okay i'm moving out of the frame so that you are able to see this one so each participant will have to choose one out of the four objects listed in the above table the objects will then be released from the top of a very rough inclined plane so very rough inclined planes means uh, slipping will not take place all right and whichever object takes least time to travel down the inclined plane will be declared the winner so the first object to reach bottom will be declared the winner and if you are to pick uh, if you are given the first choice okay which object are you going to choose to make sure that you can beat the other four okay like uh, uh, choosing one of the object will increase your chances of winning okay your win is not confirmed okay you can still uh, not win the race if you make the proper choice uh, you can at least make sure that you are not defeated okay so which object would you choose okay uh, my choice would be of course i think many of you have said that the solid sphere the solid sphere was the first one to reach the bottom so if i have given the first choice i am going to choose the solid sphere okay let's talk about some other challenge now let's talk about some other challenge uh, challenger approaches you daring you to pick one object from the above list all right you will be given only one chance only one chance to pick no no uh, second chances okay whichever object you choose will be released from the top of an inclined plane all right friction coefficient of which is not known we are not aware how much is the friction coefficient uh, the four objects will be offered to us we'll be given one chance to choose one object from that list let's see what's further okay uh, if your object undergoes pure rolling okay then you are a winner so you have to choose an object that has maximum chances of undergoing pure rolling okay and if it starts slipping you lose which object will you choose to have maximum chances of winning so if you ask me uh, well i'm not aware of the friction coefficient of the inclined surface okay uh, what can happen see if the friction coefficient is too high uh, whichever object i choose i'm going to win because the object will not slip if the friction coefficient is too high but if it's too less then the objects will have a chances of slipping so in order to ensure that i win i think i should be looking for an object that demands least friction all right because having a larger value than the required one will not trouble me okay my object will still be undergoing pure rolling if the given if the friction coefficient which is not known to me is higher than what i require but if it becomes lower than what i require then i will lose the challenge so i have to make sure that i'm selecting an object which demands least value of friction and in the table we just figured out that the solid sphere was the one that was demanding least friction all right so if this challenge is offered to me i am going to select a solid sphere because that will have the maximum chances of uh, 
अंडर गोइंग प्योर रोलिंग विदाउट स्लिपिंग और राइट ओके सींग थ्रू द चैलेंज टू और राइट इन प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन इफ द चैलेंजर इज वेरी सर्टेन दैट ही इज गोइंग टू विन नो मैटर वॉट ओके द चैलेंज हैज लाइक ही हैज पुट हिज एंटायर यू कैन से हिज एंटायर वॉट एवर अर्निंग्स आर देयर और वॉट एवर प्रॉपर्टी ही पोजेसेज और वॉट एवर ही पोजेसेज ऑन द लाइन ऑन दिस चैलेंज इट्स ऑलमोस्ट एज एफ ही इज सर्टन टू विन सो वॉट कैन बी द पॉसिबिलिटी लाइक ही इज रेडी टू बेट एनी थिंग ही इज वेरी श्योर दैट ही इज गोइंग टू विन सो वॉट कैन यू जज रिगार्डिंग द फ्रिक्शन कोविशन ऑफ द सर्फेस लाइक द थिंग इज कैन चैलेंजर चीट Uh, before posing the challenge to us can he make sure that he is going to win the challenge no matter what object we are picking yes he can uh, do that if the surface that he has chosen if that surface has a friction coefficient which is less than 2 by 7 tan theta okay this was the value needed by the solid sphere so if the surface is not offering enough friction for a solid sphere also then it is definitely not going to support the pure rolling of other objects out of the four that we have discussed all right so even if our solid sphere fails to undergo pure rolling it's very certain that the other three are bound to fail all right so if the challenger is too certain of his win probably he is already aware that the friction coefficient of the surface is less than 2 by 7 uh, tan theta and that will ensure that we are always losing the challenge and the challenger is always winning all right Okay, guys. So this is how we can see through the challenge, and if the challenger is a naive challenger, if he is not experienced enough, if he is not aware of the theory of rotation, or uh, he can possibly offer a challenge, he can possibly throw a challenge in which he is bound to lose. How? Let's say he did not measure the uh, uh, friction coefficient of the inclined surface, and this friction coefficient is large enough to support a ring also. to support a ring also ring was the object which was demanding maximum friction coefficient the demand was 0.5 tan theta all right so if the surface is rough enough to ensure a pure rolling of a ring then the other three objects are bound to undergo pure rolling all right so if the friction coefficient is more than 0.5 tan theta no matter which object you pick you are going to win all right so that would be a naive challenger that would be an inexperienced challenger because he is going to lose all right guys okay and how what would be a fair challenge what would be a fair challenge see we are being offered four objects out of which we have to choose one but if we say that a fair challenge would be the one in which there are 50% chances of our winning of my winning and there are 50% chances of the other person winning see there are two uh, there are two uh, contestants so a fair game would give equal chance uh, for both to win so there are four objects two objects should ensure my win the other two objects should ensure his win so a fair challenge would be the one uh, in which the friction coefficient is kept somewhere between uh, like uh, the friction coefficient has been kept such that two objects can undergo pure rolling and the two objects cannot undergo pure rolling so the values demanded were 2 by 7 i think uh, the other demand was uh, 2 by 5 that is 0.4 one of the demand was 0.3 i'll write it actually uh doing it orally may not uh, explain it further the demands that i can recall from that table they were 2 by 7 tan theta the next higher demand the next higher demand was 1 by 3 tan theta i believe 0.33 i remember the next higher demand was 0.4 which was 2 by 5 tan theta all right and the highest demand was from ring that was 0.5 tan theta all right so if we choose a value of friction coefficient which lies somewhere between these two value all right then we would say that the game is fair if we choose a sphere or probably this was for disk i believe so if we choose a sphere or a disk then we will win and if we have chosen uh this was for hollow sphere i believe a hollow sphere or a ring then we are going to lose okay uh, let's check these values once let's check these values once because i'm not sure whether i remember them correctly or not so yes how far hollow sphere was 2 by 5 for disk it was to 1 by 3 yes so correct all right so that will give us a fair challenge that is that is going to give us a fair challenge all right out of the four objects two will ensure that i win two will object ensure that the other the challenger wins so that would be a fair challenge all right guys okay so these are the answers to the questions that i have uh, posted here you can watch them the, uh, in the replay you can watch them i'm moving on to the next slide so this is the answer 5 okay uh yeah 
Alright guys. So the third case. In third case, if friction fails, okay, if friction fails to ensure pure rolling, then the object will slide down with some acceleration and this acceleration will be given by g sin theta minus mu g cos theta. So all will reach the bottom at the same time because now acceleration of all is same since it is uh, slipping now so we cannot use a equal to alpha r. So their alpha will be different but their a will be same so they are going to reach bottom at the same time but with different angular velocities. All right, uh, the linear velocity will be same. The linear velocity at the bottom will be same for all, but their uh, angular velocities will be different. All right, guys. So time is short, so I'm not uh, elaborating too much on this case. Okay, the equations are this. All right, so you can note them down. I, I think you'll be able to understand. Like if the first and the second case are clear to you, you should be able to predict what is going to happen in the third case. So I'm leaving it here. You can do the calculations on your own. You can confirm what is written here is correct or not. And if you find them faulty, you can mention that on the comments. All right. And if you find them good, if you find that happy, if you are enthra enthralled on doing all these things, you can also mention that in the comments. All right, guys. So uh, this is a homework slide for you. All right. I'm just putting it in front of you. You can later on check this and you can attempt the homework also. All right. You can post your answer in the comments box. So guys, I hope you liked whatever I have presented today. Uh, on that note, I'll finish this uh, session. Uh, once again, I would like to uh, tell you about the test series that we have launched for KVPY. You are going to get two part tests, three full tests and complete analysis of the test. Uh, make sure you are a part of this group. I have told this in the start of the session also. Uh, be a part of this group. Enjoy the benefits of discussing questions with other aspirants and discussing questions with teachers also. All right, guys. And do like our video, comment and subscribe, guys. That is what uh, we expect from you guys. So guys, thank you so much for watching this session. I'll be bringing you the next session uh, at the scheduled time and date. Uh, till then, see you. Bye-bye.